All right. It's been a hot minute since I last caused controversy in the Destiny community, and I am excited to get back to doing that. Last time out, I talked about crafted weapons. The time before that, it was raid encounters. So I'm going to do a follow-up I've been meaning to do for a hot minute, ranking every single exotic weapon in the Crucible. Just to set things straight, I have some ground rules. For starters, I do not care if I rank your favorite weapon as terrible. Use what you want to use. This is my perspective on the high and low end exotic options in Crucible. If you disagree with my opinion on your favorite weapon, please let me know in the comment section below. I'll be sure to take into careful consideration your feedback. Second, I'm not ranking exotic heavies. Too situational to even consider taking them seriously. But just so you know, if I were to rate them, there is only one that would even grace the top tiers. First one to guess correctly in the comments wins a prize. What prize? I'll figure it out when somebody guesses it. Finally, with the exception of one singular gun that I will say by far is the best in the entire game, this list is in no particular order. The ranking structure I have come up with suggests that weapons in the same tier are all comparable to each other, so it doesn't matter where it ends up in the video, whether it's the bottom of the tier or the top of the tier, they're all going to be around the same. Alright, with that all said and done, let's get into this. Starting off with the guns that occupy the lowest tier, these are the ones that are referred to as usually useless or typically garbage. These are the guns that I'm going to question the sanity of the people using them on my team. Simple rule states, if your exotic is outclassed by a legendary weapon in PvP, you shouldn't waste a slot on it unless you're doing something really, really funky. Starting off with Borealis, the only reason you would consider using Borealis is if you were trying to get Ionic Return to work. However, Ionic Return is a gimmick perk that doesn't even allow you to one-shot the Guardian in their super unless you hit them twice, but then again, you've already bit them twice, so in that case, you're probably killing them if they haven't killed you already. It's one of those exotics that are easily replaced by half a dozen other legendary contemporaries. The only thing Borealis has is that you can switch elements, and that is not useful at all in Crucible. Up next is Coltar. I'm sorry to those of you who actually like to use Trace Rifles in Crucible, but Trace Rifles suffer from the fact that they're one of the least forgiving weapon types in Crucible. Coltar isn't immune to that fact. More often than not, you're getting a .87 TTK in even optimally. You can only crank that down to about .67 if you're hitting every single shot from the cold heart. No tweaking, no missing, no hitting a wall, no juking, just having the person stand there and get shot, which normally they aren't doing. When you consider flinch and the fact that cold heart's exotic perk isn't going to help it unless you are already getting that .67 optimal TTK, there's no real reason to use this. It's a waste of an exotic slot. Up next is Ruinous Effigy, for the same reasons that Cold Heart is bad, this one is bad too. You're getting between a 1.0 and a 0.73 tied to kill. Its exotic perk doesn't work unless you've already killed something, and even then, its exotic perk, having that orb of void energy to slam someone on, it's not as useful as you think it is. It's a very clean gun, it has a clean sight picture, it's a little bit easier to use than Cold Heart, but it still doesn't distract you from the fact... That it's an exotic that you're not getting any practical use out of its exotic perk unless you're trolling. I sound like a broken record here, but for all the reasons that Cold Heart and Ruinous Effigy are bad, Divinity is also bad. The only exception of Divinity is that it is fun in one particular case. If you are pretending that Crucible is a raid boss and you group up with people and you shoot the crit and you try to get massive numbers. That is the only time this thing is usable, but when you do use it, it's a little bit of fun, but it still doesn't deny the fact that it is usually a useless weapon. Next up on our adventure in slandering trace rifles is Wave Splitter. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, just get an orb of power and Wave Splitter is goaded. True. Sometimes, however, what you fail to consider is that with the new special economy ammo changes, you're barely going to have enough ammo to kill a single person with this thing, even with the bonus to the orb of power. Now, if you're chaining orbs of power, you're stacking your ammo for the entire game with this thing, and then you just go crazy right at the end of the game after everybody's already used their supers, sure. But 80% of the game, the first 80%, the most impactful portion of the game, you have dead weight while you're trying to build enough special ammo to make this thing usable. 
Now moving on to Navigator, for the same reason why Wave Splinter's ammo economy problems hurt it, so do Navigator. Surprise, surprise, the gun where you need to waste your entire ammo reserves per pickup to generate one singular grapple point is not going to be good, especially when that grapple point is visible to everybody. It is a one trick pony and once that trick is used, the trick is useless. Now forgive me, all you Titan melee go to strand, grapple, and fly around the map. You guys are freaks, and I respect the hell out of you. However, if you're using Navigator to do it, you're not doing anything. And finally, on this episode of Trace Rifle Slander, Prometheus Lens is the last Trace Rifle in the D tier, the usually useless category. I don't need to tell you why this thing was good for one singular weekend when it was bugged. Everybody remembers the Laser Tag Weekend. However, this gun's biggest concern is that you need to burn half of the ammo reserves to get it to maximum effectiveness. And when you've gotten it to maximum effectiveness, your entire enemy team can see the orb coming before you even know where they are. Because you have to waste your own ammo while giving away your position, just hoping someone runs into you, it is a massive strategic advantage for your enemies. Everybody sees you coming, everybody knows what you're doing, and everybody knows that they will get melted if they walk into the f***ing sun. Now, my advice to you, don't use Prometheus Lens. It's as simple as that. Moving on to a gun that I feel that most people are actually going to agree with me is useless is Delicate Tomb. We all know why it's useless. It's because it is a trace rifle with a fixed path of bullets that do not go where your enemy is. The bolts, despite being a lot of them, don't go where you need them to go. Sure, if you treat this thing like a shotgun and barrel stuff it right inside their cooter, okay, you're going to get your kill with both the hip fire and the aim down sights. However, if you're playing against anybody who has a brain in between, in their eyes they're going to know exactly what you're doing as soon as they see that delicate tomb and you're going to get punished for it every single time delicate tomb is a genuinely bad weapon in crucible and hell it is barely usable in pve if it weren't for the arc synergy You'd think that Bungie would know how to make the Boomer Knight fantasy feel real, and x Dearus is a gimmick weapon simple as hard to hit, small blast radius, people see it coming from a mile away, by the time you're actually amplified and you got that max charge, that max attack speed, that max fire rate, people are just going to dodge your shots, it doesn't matter how quick you can fire them, if people can just simply move out of the way of your shots as you're shooting them and kill you before you can kill them, it's not a good weapon. Hierarchy is a weapon that is bad for a couple reasons. For starters, it has two functions. One, it's a bow, and two, it's exotic perk gives away your position to everyone on the map. I don't know if you know, if you've been living under a rock, whenever you hit fire a hierarchy of needs, you get that targeting data, you put the big circle out there, you shoot your arrows through it, and they track. However, that kind of ignores the fact that people are smart enough not to walk in front of the massive circle, and that circle just screams, hey, my user is going to be behind this. To get over that hurdle, you'd have to think that Hierarchy of Needs is a good bow and that the tracking is strong enough to deal with the fact that you are a screaming target standing still waiting to die, and unfortunately, that just isn't the case. Moving on to Skyburner's Oath, this gun is usable for one reason and one reason only, it is effective at spreading scorch if you want to do some stupid ignite builds sure hip fire with skyburner's oath to your heart's extent however it's a scout rifle with a ttk of two seconds if you're not hitting headshots and barely under one second if you are hitting headshots the slugs have travel time just this is one of those guns that you just need to use and figure out why it's bad for yourself it's not competitive if you want to be a warlock and do an AC-130 build, sure, it is a meme weapon through and through. Another meme weapon from year one, sweet business. This is a chain gun. It has the same problems that Prometheus Lens is. You have to give away precision before using it effectively. Everybody can see it a mile away. The explosive rounds give you away. Nobody is really getting caught off guard by this anymore. Try using it. It's not a particularly good auto rifle in its own right, and it's not a good machine gun in its other right. It really is the worst of both worlds. Sweet business is usually a useless. Weapon. This is a little bit of a controversial one, but Fourth Horseman is usually useless because 
I feel that even though it is a tiny bit stronger because you don't lose special ammo after death, the range issues on this gun are telling. You are using 4th Horseman for one purpose and one purpose only. That is trying to break a bubble. And if you're trying to break a bubble, you can just kill the person inside of the bubble with something like Conditional Finality or use Cerberus to break the bubble in a much more efficient way than wasting all of your special ammo. Even at that, the thing's recoil is super unpredictable. You're lucky if you can kill more than one person with four shots for this thing, unless you are super cracked, pacing your shots, and are only shooting them when you are holding hands. Any weapon that requires you to hurt yourself to use it in an environment where the time to kills are less than a fraction of a second is going to be a bad weapon. Touch of Malice is one of those weapons. I really don't think that damaging yourself in the service of killing somebody else is particularly useful because you are reducing their time to kill at the same time as you are theoretically reducing your own time to kill. So for every shot that they would have needed to hit on you, they don't need to hit that on you anymore. And even at that, if you're using Touch of Malice as a regular 260 scout rifle, why would you do that for starters? It only has a 10 round magazine before you start to kill yourself. Admittedly, you can't actually die while using Touch of Malice anymore. That was updated a while ago, but it's just not an effective weapon to use inside a Crucible. I anticipate that I'm going to get quite a lot of hate for putting Verglass Curve in the usually useless tier. As a bow, it sucks, it is a lightweight bow, maybe it'll get a little bit better once the post patch into the light changes hit because it was nerfed a little bit too hard when bows were changed, but even at that, if you're running a stasis build, there are better options for stasis weapons. I really don't think that this bow is worth it, and even if you want to use a bow inside a Crucible, there's just other better exotic options for both using a bow and for using stasis. Moving on to another bow, Trinity Ghoul. I feel like this is relatively self-explanatory. This thing is goaded in PvE if you need to do adequately or really anything. This is a fun weapon to use. However, in Crucible, you're two-shotting with it and you're not one-shotting with the exotic perk active. Under very specific scenarios, you might get a one-shot. However, it really isn't happening. And because of that, you're not being able to use the exotic perk unless people are clumped together so tight that they're kissing it's not good it's not effective and it really isn't worth the exotic slot compared to other arc options and to other bow options in the same slot for the final bow in the usual useless category, we have Wishkeeper. Now, Wishkeeper, don't get me wrong, it's fun if you're trolling. However, anybody that has played the game for more than two minutes or died by Wishkeeper once will know that they probably shouldn't be running into the strand traps. You are going to be catching a certain percentile of the game that resides in the bottom 20% of the IQ bell curve in this thing. Maybe if you're a Titan, you have a little bit more use out of this, considering that you have Tangle and Shackle on demand through Barricade, through one of the Fragments, but why use Wish Ender, really? If you're using Shackle, you're not taking the time to prime a bow just to get the cheeky little one-shot headshots. This thing, it's not good. And finally, for the last item in the worst tier, the usually useless category is Wicked implement wicked implement is a scout rifle that in theory should be good in the current checkmate meta however this thing's time to kill is abysmally low and when you're using it you're getting flinched off of your shots like crazy by any competent player that manages to even send a single shot in your direction maybe there are some uses for the stasis if you're shooting someone on disjunction who's in a super across the map but it's really not a good gun with that all said and done, that was what I consider the D tier, the usually useless weapons. Now, as with all things, use them if you like using them. If you think you can do work with them, sure. However, these are guns that I feel are the bottom of the barrel. These guns are all waste of an exotic slot. They're all outclassed by every other legendary contemporary in class. And if you're using these, you are more likely than not going to be a detriment to your team. 
Up next is the C tier. Now, C tier, I'm classifying, is certain use case scenarios for these weapons. Every single weapon in the C tier, I think, is fine. I think it is perfectly serviceable if you have the correct build and or if you've dedicated enough time to learning the ins and outs of these weapons. I think that that is the most critical metric for success. These are weapons that if you are a master of, if you've spent tens or even hundreds of hours using them, you're going to be able to to tear up no matter what is going to happen however the casual player picking up these weapons are going to use them and it's going to feel like they aren't as effective that's just because they haven't taken the time to learn them properly these weapons are less brain dead than all the weapons in the tiers above it. However, this really is just the average Joe Schmo. You're looking at these weapons. Sure, you can use them in Crucible and do okay, but if you're not putting in that time and effort, you're not going to be a top, top player with them. Starting off with the only exotic trace rifle that I didn't put in D tier is Ager Scepter. Now, Ager Scepter, why do you ask, doesn't deserve this high praise in being the only one that isn't garbage? Well, specifically because of its exotic catalyst, being able to trade your super to essentially walk around the map for 30 seconds and just kill everything in sight. Perfectly okay, perfectly fine. Really, if you can time this correctly, being able to build up enough special ammo at the same time as you have your super swapping your special weapon like maybe a minute before you get your super so you can build up a brick maybe double drops this is it, it, it's good for only one use and that is using the catalyst to get that laser death beam if you're using a bad super like i don't know for example silk strike then you might want to consider using agar scepter hot swapping it just so you can get that death beam up next is bastion now i know what you're saying this thing used to be the best weapon in the entire game well now it's not it is a perfectly serviceable weapon if you are a guy who enjoys using Bastion. I mean, that's pretty much it. If you have the right predictive ability, Bastion is going to do you quite good. Um, besides the ammo changes, its range, it's kind of forgiving, really. It's as good as the user makes it, which means it has certain use case scenarios, and that kind of fits the definition. Devil's Ruin should have been higher. However, with the change to the checkmate meta, they broke it so that it wasn't broken meaning that the laser did significantly less damage because it was basically a free fusion rifle now you'll be lucky to get a single kill with devil's ruin devil's ruin besides this is kind of a middling sidearm i mean really if you have that good predictive capability the same thing as bastion has then you're probably going to be okay apart from that there are other better sidearms you can use it's not really better than most legendaries unless you are trying to abuse the laser portion but that's just the way things go sometimes up next is edge of action edge of action is confusing because even though it says action you have to play remarkably passive to actually get full use of this thing once you're able to charge up the remote shield and two maybe three shots if you're unlucky and you let your guard down a little bit you can take any points you want you want to capture you want to push a hard angle easy you have a remote shield it's just a mini ward of dawn except less useful up next is edge of intent and for the same reason that edge of action is kind of mid so is edge of intent the only thing is i think that edge of intent is a little bit worse than edge of action however it's still a glaive it's still usable and the rift that you get from Edge of Intent is pretty good, considering that you get a healing turret instead of a healing rift, so it does have some uses. It's just a little bit worse than Lumina in terms of the healing that it does, but it's, it's just okay. Up next is Collective Obligation. I know you must have expected me to edge you three times in a row. However, I decided that I did not want to do that. Instead, I wanted to cover a mid-pulse rifle that is barely usable as a pulse rifle and is only usable as it relates to its exotic perk. And its exotic perk is so difficult and tricky to navigate inside of a PvP environment that it isn't even worth it. Even though it's more usable now, you don't have to get all three keywords on the gun at the same time. The bonuses you get when you get all three keywords for Void to be active on collective obligation at the same time it is insane you are a melt machine for like seven or eight seconds however you're back to a mid pulse rifle this is most consistent on hunter if you're using something like a volatile rounds gear falcon hoiberg build and throwing suppressor grenades but apart from that you can't really get it to work all that much on both warlock and titan without significant investment into your time and play style 
Polaris Lance, in theory, is one of the better-ish scout rifles. However, it has handling issues. Even though it hits like a truck, you're not getting a lot of use out of its exotic perk because by the time you've hit someone enough times to trigger the exotic perk, they're either dead or you're dead because somebody else has killed you because this thing is terrible in 2v1s it's bad in a 6v6 game mode because you're getting ganged on it's not really useful in trials because it's time to kill is relatively slow compared to every other weapon player slants is one of those that if you can get it to work in sixes you save the explosive shot maybe you can get a couple of cheeky solar detonations you're gonna have a fun time for a minute besides that it's really too clunky to seriously consider using it as a mainstay Moving on to Malfeasance. Now, Malfeasance is very funny. It is a 180 hand cannon, and it stacks with your team. If you're running a stack full of people with Malfeasance, no matter where you shoot someone from the map, if you can land five of those Malfeasance shots, they die guaranteed. It is as close to a guaranteed because it is a guaranteed kill. The explosion from Malfeasance will kill anybody no matter what they do because you can stack it with your teammates. It's okay. Besides that, it's a... It's a 180 hand cannon, and that's really all I need to say. 180s haven't been good for a very, very long time, and it's just a 180 hand cannon that is a little bit better than most if you're using it as a team, but the investment that this requires as a team isn't worth it. One of the newer weapons on this list is Necrochasm. Now, maybe I will change my mind when this thing gets a Catalyst rework. However, as it stands, currently Necrochasm is a gimmick bullet hose. I have gotten destroyed by it. I have destroyed people with it very, very infrequently. Every other auto rifle is just better than Necrochasm. Besides wanting to use the Curse Thrall explosion and get that quick fire rate, it's a meme build. The point with most of these guns is that they're usable for meme builds, and Necrochasm is just one of those. So I'm going to go to Symmetry. Symmetry is one of those scout rifles that you think would be okay. It's good when you can get its exotic perk to work efficiently. When you can get max stacks of this thing, you can absolutely obliterate people. I have gotten killed by this on rare few occasions. However, when I do get killed by it, it's always one of those, what the heck is that guy using and why is he using it and how can I use it myself? And then when I find out what he's doing and how I got melted so quick, it's like, oh, it's Symmetry. You had to play with Symmetry and use it. A scout rifle like that for so long and just one tap and run away it's not a fun play style trying to get symmetry to work but when it works i don't deny that it has some effect the harbinger of broken dreams telesto i would say that this thing is really funny i mean it one shots most times if you can hit people with all of the bursts however it's, it's telesto it's there's just better options for fusion rifles this gun is good at winning trades however you're not really streaking out with a telesto you're not really using it for traps it's a meme gun for meme builds it trades kills really easily don't get me wrong however apart from that no I'm your Huckleberry was a gun that used to terrorize Crucible, however, it's seen better days. Don't get me wrong, sixes, goaded, if you find people that just want to run into a stream of your bullets, great, it's good fun, it feels great whenever it works the way it's supposed to work, but more often than not, you're using a mid-tier SMG and wasting an exotic slot when there are things like Immortal and Unending Tempest and Shioris that just do a better job at being an SMG than Huckleberry does. Do not fear, Manticore is here, and Manticore is still garbage even after the changes where they made it a little bit easier to activate and deactivate the Antigraph Thrusters. It is just a bad playstyle. However, Manticore itself, solid stats, it's a solid SMG. However, you get screwed more often than not when you're using it. It's good as an SMG, it's a solid void SMG, and you can do some funny things, some funny void builds with it. However, because you're getting screwed over by its exotic perk, it just does you more harm than it does good. It is a fundamentally flawed gun that will never be good because it relies on a bad playstyle to use consistently. Speaking of bad playstyles, up next is Tommy's Matchbook, the hurt yourself to win playstyle. Tommy's, when it is fully revved up, you cook. Don't get me wrong, Tommy's is a good auto rifle even without the exotic perk. When you use the exotic perk, this thing could go crazy. However, it has the same issues that Touch of Malice does. By hurting yourself, you hurt yourself more than you help yourself. The only difference is between Tommy's and the reason why it gets into C tier is that Tommy's matchbook, the auto rifle, 
is a good auto rifle, whereas Touch of Malice, the scout rifle, is a bad scout rifle before its exotic perk. Vex Calibre is one of those weapons that I wish was better. The melee playstyle from Vex Calibre makes it so you get your overshield, you get your increased melee damage. In theory, it's supposed to be easy to chain, but the way this game is coded, you get so many freaking whiffs when you're using this thing. It's an okay glaive, and it makes your melee playstyle okay. You can't use your powered melee. That's one of the big issues with using glaives. Now that glaives actually stack with exotic armors that have melee functionality like Triton Vice, this thing is a little bit better than it used to be, but in Crucible, it is a gimmick at best. Buried Bloodline, another dungeon weapon that we all thought was good when we took it into Crucible for the first time after getting it from Warlord's Ruin. However, where this gun is a powerhouse is also its biggest weakness. Its tracking is abysmal. Don't get me wrong, if you can get over the tracking issues that Barry Bloodline has, this thing might be a B-tier weapon because of the devour that you get when you're proccing hits and you can weaken people. It's okay at spreading status. It's okay for proccing void keywords if you're doing invisibility or other void builds. But apart from that, the vast majority of people that pick this thing up are going to put it down almost immediately. It's usable, but don't get me wrong, it's not good and it's not even close to top tier here. Support weapons in Crucible have always been gimmicky, and Lumina is no exception, so since the support gimmick of Lumina, made a little bit better with the Catalyst, is okay at best, we have to examine the hand cannon itself at worst, and it's not a really good hand cannon. Compared to other 140s, it's lacking some serious range and stability and handling and zoom. I mean, really, this thing it's lacking stats because it has a good exotic perk for all intents and purposes, much better everywhere else, but in Crucible, if you want to be a support, it's a gimmick for sure, and it's not particularly good. Trespasser is one of those guns that I get killed with once a month and wonder why I haven't been using Trespasser all along, but then when you use Trespasser, you realize why you haven't been using it all along. It's a mid-side arm with a funky activate condition for an exotic perk that is extremely punishing if you aren't able to chain kills. This thing is easy to waste the exotic perk on, considering that if you kill somebody with the big burst of Trespasser, it immediately resets to another burst, but if you don't have that sort of trigger discipline, you're not going to be able to react quick enough, and then you waste your second burst, and then you're back to just having a mid sidearm. This thing was okay during Rise of Iron. When they brought it back, I thought it was going to be good, but no. Moving on to a weapon they used to terrorize the Crucible, it is Lorenz Driver. Now, I am sorry for those of you who hear Lorenz Driver and have nightmares, I'm talking about how this weapon is now. And now it is practically unusable due to a couple of factors. For starters, this thing was nerfed into the freaking ground. Its aim assist was destroyed. It's far less forgiving. There's basically no tracking. There's no magnetism to this thing anymore. All the things that made it good, all the things that made it actually overpowered are what had to change. This gun was only good because it was OP. Now that it's not OP, we examine it as a linear fusion rifle, it's serviceable, and we examine it because of its exotic perk, and if you get its exotic perk working, do not get me wrong, this thing shreds, it cooks. However, getting to that point with the new checkmate changes is near impossible. Up next is another linear fusion rifle that used to be broken, and you guessed it, it is Arbalist. For the same reasons why Lorenz is now bad, so is Arbalist. The changes to its inherent aim assist and magnetism and the ammo economy changes from checkmate to now means that this thing is basically unusable. You know, there are some cases where if you're using a Titan and you have sight and ramparts or, you know, on a sorta long-ish range map, but then again, you still have to deal with snipers and scout rifles and getting flinched off this thing heavy, it's really not recommended to use Arbalest, even though you still could do some work with it. Up next is Tessellation. I'm not going to lie to you, I have not actually had the privilege of using this gun before because I refuse to buy the $120 edition, the pre-order of Final Shape, until I'm actually shown something worth buying. No, April 9th, a new dev stream, we're gonna get shown more of the Final Shape, so maybe I'll have it then. However, for now, from what I understand of this gun and from the gameplay that I have seen and my friends that have used it and vouched for it, 
they don't even think that it's that good. You have to rely on abusing your grenade and wasting your grenade to synergize with this gun. It is a fusion rifle that is okay, but with its exotic perk, you're wasting your grenade, and really, if you're not getting those one-shot kills, you just wasted your grenade and you just wasted your ammo for your fusion rifle. It is the worst of both worlds. However, if you can chain those powered grenade final blows from this fusion rifle into more powered grenade final blows, you can do a little bit of work, but still, is it worth wasting your grenade for? Final warning on final warning. I suck with this gun. I tried to make a video with this gun. I've tried to make many videos with this gun, and I can never get it to work. However, the people that are able to get this to work play a gimmick play style that I fully support. Don't get me wrong. It's annoying when it happens to me, but it's easy to play around. And if you're not hitting those tracking, the tracking, which has a deceptively short range, by the way, this thing's tracking range is incredibly short. Shots that you think should be tracking simply aren't tracking. Because of these reasons, I have to rate it in C tier. It's usable if you can make it work and you spent enough time learning how to use the auto aim and shooting around corners and things like that. But apart from that, for me, it's a no. I wish you could see my face when Monte Carlo came up when I was trying to script this. I just stared at my camera like Jim from The Office because I know how many people are going to be pissed off at me that I don't like this thing. This thing, it's just a bad auto rifle with a disappointing catalyst. I don't care about you titan freaks who think you can make this work. You're not. You're throwing. This thing is a substandard auto rifle with a play style improved by getting a substandard auto rifle to work. Sure, you get ability energy great you get a lot more ability energy when you get kills and cruise but however you have to subject yourself to monte carlo in the first place and don't even get me started on the freaks that think that the bayonet for this thing is good it's a good idea don't get me wrong however in practice it just doesn't work so certain use case scenarios c tier perfect for monte carlo no mercy for Merciless. Merciless is one of those fusion rifles that you have to waste two bullets for the price of one. It's an okay fusion rifle. If you shoot somebody and you don't kill them, you get that second burst really quick. Boom, bing, bang, boom, you're done. However, you're wasting two shots to get one kill, whereas most fusion rifles can consistently get one shot with one kill if you're using it correctly. And, you know, Merciless, you do get that kill. You reload. You get the damage boost. You have those little bit of extra stats from the catalyst. It's okay. Don't get me wrong, that's why it's down here. It's certain use and certain use case scenarios. Last but not least, Tiku's Divination. Now, Tiku's Divination is here for the same reason that Final Warning is here. If you can get the exotic perk to work on this gun, then it is going to be a monster. It is undefeated at what it does, at just blowing people up immediately before they even expect to die. Because more often than not, people don't even realize they're getting hit by Tiku's until they've exploded from the second shot of it. As a regular bow, Tiku's is underwhelming, but as a bow with the exotic perk of being able to prime somebody with a hip fire, retreat around a corner, and get a cheeky little bing bang boom powered shot, great. But if you're using this as bow, it's a substandard bow. If you get this thing to work with the exotic perk, it's a completely different story, and you're going to have a great time using this thing. I have a great time using this thing every once in a while, too, but it's not even comparable to other legendary bows unless you're getting the most out of the exotic perk. Alright, so that was the end of C tier. There are a couple picks that, in hindsight, I'm seeing could have been in D tier and could have been in D tier. Things like Agar Scepter, for the reason that I was saying that most exotic trace rifles are plainly useless inside of Crucible. However, I think Agar Scepter has a little bit more utility because you can trade a bad super for like 20 to 30 seconds of amazing damage. Also, there are guns in here that are entirely team dependent, like Bolt the Edges, Malfeasance, if you're using Tessellation, Wasting Your Grenade, Arbalist, Bolt the Linear Fusion Rifles. I feel that there's cases to be made for these guns to be in either B or D tier, but I'm comfortable with all of these guns being together, and I stick by what I said. If you put enough time into learning the mechanics and mastering these weapons, you are going to have an amazing time in Crucible. There's pretty much nobody that's going to be able to beat you at what you do. You're going to feel great while using these guns, and you're going to have a whole hell of a lot of fun. And that's what I feel is the pure embodiment of C-tier, where you can justify to yourself and your teammates, like, hey, listen, my play style with these, it works. It may not work for you, but it works for me. That's not true for the D tier, whereas D tier, you're just throwing. 
Up next is our B tier weapons. Now, B tier weapons fall into a very specific category that I like to call comparable to good legendary weapons because it's no secret there has been enough power creep over the years where most legendary weapons are better than most exotics at this point, and I feel that that shouldn't be the case. However, that's just been the natural progression of these games over the last 10 years that exotics feel less exotic and legendaries feel like they do more. However, these guns in B tier are able to compete with the best legendary weapons that you actually have to think for a second when you're using something like a pulse rifle that's legendary or a pulse rifle that's exotic saying, hey, do I use the legendary pulse rifle? Do I use the exotic version of it? How is this going to work in my build? How's it going to feel? How's it going to play? It's one of those kinds of situations. This is where the weapons become easier for the average Joe Schmo to use, for everybody to pick up, where you pick these up, you're probably going to do some good work because they're exotic. However, there is a definite higher skill ceiling to these. Starting off, I got a couple of pulse rifles for you. Bad Juju is a feel-good, play-good kind of exotic that, even though we're sitting at a respectable 450 RPM and a .87 TTK, this thing currently plays really, really, really good. More so in 6s than in 3s for obvious reasons, considering that its catalyst is very, very heavily favoring players who are able to chain more than 2 kills together to get that x5 string of curses to crank it all the way down to a 0.5 ttk anyway most people as long as you can get two kills this thing is going to be hitting for a 0.5 second time to kill stringing two kills together with this thing is remarkably easy not only that you're getting your super energy based on the strength of the amount of kills you're getting so people running low intellect builds using a bad juju will be pretty proud of themselves Bad Juju is one of those guns that on paper is hard to justify. All I can say is go into Crucible, pick it up, try it out for a little bit, come back here and let me know what you think. You'll be surprised. Moving on to another pulse rifle, we have Revision Zero. Now, Revision Zero used to be way stronger than it was now when it came out. It was a little bit over two. Now, it's kind of in line where it's supposed to be. More often than not, you're hitting a time to kill of around 0 0.73, 0 0.73 optimal TTK. It just really depends on what you're doing, whether or not you're using the light fire or the burst fire. The, the four burst is a little bit stronger than the two burst. Currently, the four burst has a faster time to kill than the two burst, but the two bursts definitely smacks from some longer ranges if you're able to play like that it's just one of those one and done it is a gun gun it doesn't do anything special hunter's trance you got to get three kills in crucible to be able to activate it for the first time so it's good but not by any means as broken as it used to be up next is Graviton Lance. Graviton Lance is one of those that have been around forever. It was really good in the past. It was really bad before. It's been changed a couple times. Now it is just serviceable. 300 RPM, 0.87 TTK. It has a good, solid, exotic perk no matter what you're doing. Remarkably stable. Seemingly infinite range because of its exotic perk. It's not broken. It's just one of those that it's hard to justify why. It's so good other than by gun feel. It just feels really, really good because it has maxed out stability because of its traits. You are rarely, if ever, flinched off this thing if you're using tier 10 resilience. It is a solid weapon that anybody who wants to try a good pulse rifle should pick up. I'm going to let y'all in on a dirty little secret. Hard light has been good this entire time and nobody's realized it because prosecutor and summoner are brand new toys and hard light used to be fundamentally broken during the season of the laser light show those couple of weeks during i believe it was season of the worthy where hard light was absolutely crazy season nine it had just received its visual recoil nerf and basically no recoil on the gun the double damage from the ricochets this thing melts and it tears behind cover give hard light a try if you are bored and need something to fight against prosecutor or summoner. 
as of the date that I'm making this, it is April 5th. Quicksilver Storm is getting a slight nerf on April 9th with the release of Into the Light. The only thing it's going to do is it's going to make the rockets shoot out less frequently. I do not think that Quicksilver Storm is going to be any worse. However, in Crucible, it's just going to maintain the same tier as it's been. It's a standard auto rifle. It does a cool thing with grenades. If you can hit the rocket, which are going to spawn less frequently now, it can reduce your time to kill. Also, the grenades, you can get a cheeky little one-shot if you spike someone the right way. It's essentially a free grenade launcher. However, you have to earn your rockets. It's a little bit hard to control. It's range leaves a little bit to desire other than that it sounds like i'm saying a lot of bad things about quicksilver storm but no i do think this thing is good i think it's just a solid all-around auto rifle all right now this one is a sleeper pick for this category and now i'm talking centrifuge people think centrifuge is really bad but it's not it's just playing it with the right setup the right mindset the right subclass momentum based guns you always have to move you probably have to be playing arc just so you can maintain your charge with the gun but this thing is absolutely filthy when you get regenerative motion in play oh my god in recent weeks some of my worst enemies have been centrifuge users who have absolutely destroyed me however it's all down to the player and not really the gun because the gun itself it's kind of mid 0.8 ttk you know uh, the exotic perk is kind of a pain to keep up if you are not used to that particular style of play however once you get it down it's a very very solid option for an auto rifle not the best you might have to think twice about hey do i want to use my exotic on centrifuge when i can easily just use something like prosecutor considering they're the same rpm but it's just something to think about if you want to try something a little bit different, but not use Prosecutor. Now, I can already hear at least one of you. Oh my god, my baby, my Crimson. Why is Crimson here? Crimson is so freaking annoying to play against. It's not good. It's just one of those that is consistently annoying. It's always that one bozo Crimson player that just sneaks out of nowhere like... Ah, I got some cheese here. I got my... I got my Crimson ready to... That's what Crimson does, okay? Crimson is just an annoying gun to play against, and it's not the best. There are much, much better hand cannons. There's even much better hand cannon exotics. Hell, there's a hand cannon I'm going to talk about next that shares the same tier that I think is better than Crimson, but Crimson is just so ripe for abuse. If you have the right degenerate snake in behind that little gun, just... 1945 cosplay Sturm. If you want to kick it back to the old days, you're going to use this thing. Sturm is just a low key, solid hand cannon. It is a 120, so it does get outclassed by certain other 140s like Rose, Igneous Hammer. It easily outclasses Sturm. It's just really, are you using the Sturm and Durant combo or are you just using Sturm for the fact that you want that, mm, you want that little boom, boom. You want that big, huge, meaty hand cannon in your life because no matter what you're doing, you're going to be hitting 47 body, 87 head. There is no way to speed up your time to kill under one second with this thing, no matter what. It is a good support weapon. It's a good cleanup weapon. And oh my God, just the, the sex factor, the cool factor on Sturm. It just makes me want to rate it higher. However, I must put it where it belongs in B tier. Osteo Straga is up next. This gun has a very specific play style. It's one of the few guns that actually does tracking and does it well. I don't know what sauce they were smoking whenever they were making Osteo Straga, but it actually works as intended. Good hit registration, good tracking, good everything. The poison is just a plus in Crucible. I mean, one of my earliest flawless tickets when I started playing Trials of Osiris again was with Osteo Striga. Uh, I really don't have anything but good things to say about it except for the fact that SMGs are strong. Yes, but we're talking same slot SMGs, Unending Tempest, Immortal. We're talking different slot SMGs that are kicking around. I mean, if you want to use Multimach or Shiuras, like this is just better SMGs on paper. Not only that, auto rifles are just stronger than SMGs right now. It's I wouldn't say Osteo is worth the exotic slot unless you are doing a specific build that supports Osteo. But then again, you know, why? 
I'm going to say something silly. You have one reason to use Risk Runner and one reason alone, and that is countering Ark. If there is nobody using Ark in your lobby, you have no reason to use Risk Runner. Risk Runner is good because of the Ark counter potential. Risk Runner is good because you can get the Superconductor and then go absolutely ballistic with it. This is what old Zalo Supercell used to be. This is what Zalo Supercell wanted to be whenever it was fully beefed up and juiced up, but that's Risk Runner. Risk Runner people think is strong right now people think it's actually worth the exotic slot because prosecutor but once prosecutor falls out of the meta there's not a lot of good arc weapons that we're dealing with you know so it's comparable to good legendary smgs risk runner but only if you're activating the exotic perk Moving on to Datto's worst nightmare, we have the reward from Crown of Sorrow Taraba retrievable through the exotic kiosk for Spoils of Conquest. Taraba is a gun that is goaded with the sauce. It has a new reload animation, but when you're not using its exotic perk, it's just a perfectly serviceable SMG. It's not really better than any gun on this list. It's not worse than anything that's came before it. It's not really better than anything that's gonna come in the tiers after it. But if you can manage to get that exotic perk up and rolling, really good in sixes. Up next is Traveler Chosen. Now, Traveler Chosen is a gun that I thought was going to be better after the checkmate changes where ability energy was hard to come by, but, and again, by the time you're getting your kills with the Traveler's Chosen, the odds that you've already regened that ability energy are pretty pretty good i mean it's a little bit of extra ability energy on top but when your gun's prime function is just to get you more ability energy you're crutching traveler's chosen when you could be using anything else it's good it is a perfectly serviceable sidearm it's one of the better sidearms in the game i would argue there's not a lot of legendary sidearms that i would say are better than this you know maybe heliocentric and Sturm, you know, a couple tuber sidearms out there that might be better than it. But then again, Travel's Chosen is just always going to be there. It's always going to be good for ability energy. It's just not as good as I thought it was going to be post checkmate update. Whistling past the Traveler Chosen Graveyard, we now move on to Rat King. Rat King, I think, is overrated. The only people you see using Rat King are Terminal Sweat Hunters who are abusing Void Invisibility builds. Void, Invi void Invisibility isn't the best status. I know some people say, oh, go invisible. The blueberries won't be able to see you. It's perfectly obvious that you're invisible. You're really using it for a true sight. You're using it for that little bit of healing that Rat King is going to give you, but it's a meme weapon more than anything it really shares the same status as traveler chosen as the gun itself it's good it's exotic perk it's serviceable however are you using rat king for the void build or are you just using rat king because you think rat king is good it's a good sidearm but you know why are you using it when there are other options it's comparable to good legendaries but still like do you want to waste your exotic slot on rat king think to your think to yourself Cryostesia 77,000. That is the amount of tears that were shed every second when this thing was initially announced during Season of the Splicer. This was when Stasis was the dominant force in the meta, and even when Cryostesia came out, it was okay for two seconds before people realized that just Stasis abilities were more effective than it. Some of the freaks of nature that i have played against using cryostesia literally legitimately made me uninstall the game i have uninstalled the game on three occasions after playing a game at crucible and one of them was going against somebody who was using cryostesia so angry was i at this guy using this gun that i just had to get the game off of my computer just because that's my experience against it doesn't mean that that's everybody's experience using it and going against it as well. All right, back to more serious thought. Christesia, it's a good sidearm. It feels good. It still is good for freezing people. If you get that freeze off, it's pretty much a guaranteed kill. You can chain it pretty well. However, are you going to use stasis in Crucible? Some people will. Some people won't. It's just how highly do you value stasis? And if you value stasis, you're going to use this. If not, it's really not good anywhere else. One of the old school Terrors of the Monarch, this thing was good until about 12 seconds ago when bows were nerfed, specifically the Monarch had a little bit of adjustments. I do not think I have seen anybody use the Monarch since the middle of March when the checkmate update happened. I don't know what happened. This thing is still really good, but do you want to waste your exotic slot on a bow of this nature when lightweights were just toned down the kills are less consistent the poison doesn't last as long as it does before it's an okay bow it has unrelenting in the catalyst it's 
fine. Don't get me wrong. It's just, you know, you got to think to yourself, do you want to use it for the exotic slot or not? I never really understood the hype behind Wish Enter before. I mean, it, now I kind of get it. You know, the true say was crazy being able to see people through walls, but there are so many ways to abuse radar, abuse grenades, abuse gr abilities to be able to get that information on people that I never really thought that the Wish Ender true say was that strong. I mean, some people were able to zest the absolute hell out of this thing and go on absolutely crazy rampages and those people those freaks that were able to abuse this got it nerfed into the ground and it's never coming back to where we want it to be however you know it's a good bow it's a serviceable bow you can still use true sight a little bit if you kind of finagle it do you want to use it as your exotic slot in this current meta probably not so b tier Mida multi-tool before this upcoming March patch I thought was garbage. I used it for quite a while during my Catalyst video trying to get a good feel of it. I found out very quickly that there were just other better scout rifles, but Mida is kind of goaded with the sauce, not because you have the synergy between Mida and Callus Mini Tool or Mida Mini Tool, whatever one you want to use, but because it's just a solid key weapon. It, it, I don't know what it is about the weapon model, but the fact that it's so stubby and it just makes it handle way better than other scout rifles. Now, I don't think it's the best scout rifle. It's easily outcompeted by things like Jade Rabbit and even Symmetry even to some extent, but... Mida multi-tool is a much more usable gun than Symmetry, at least. So, I'm gonna rate it here in B tier. I'm putting Lord of Wolves here. It used to be really good. I say that for a lot of these weapons. It used to be really good because some of you are thinking, oh man, these weapons are just overpowered. They have to be in S tier. Right now, this thing is not overpowered. Lord of Wolves is perfectly balanced. Nobody's used it in quite a while. Not a lot of serious Lord of Wolves use, but it's just another one of those like Graviton or like Hard Like. Just pick it up and use it. You know, once you can cope and deal with the special ammo meta, you'll find that this thing is surprisingly effective still. You know, they did do the slight nerf to the passive active function of release the wolves between the 5 and the 15 burst you know obviously issues with ammo economy and you're not able to chain special anymore and i know hunter freaks out there just spam this thing with omni oculus it's still an okay shotgun it's basically a pulse rifle you know it's just can you play distances appropriately can you predict well it's just one of those you got to pick it up and use it still it's not the best but you can do work with it I'm putting the toaster right here. Why? Because there are other better fusion rifles that occupy the same slot. Specifically, Glacier Chasm, you know, Yelton does a job that no other fusion rifle does. It has tracking. It goes forever. It's a single bolt and just it's so satisfying hitting the hammer on somebody. However, Yelton, it's seen better days. It's still good. It's just, you know, you have to put a little bit more work into making Yelton work. It's not as free as it used to be, which is why I can't say it's worth the exotic slot i'd rather use other fusion rifles uh in this case you know main ingredient or glacial chasm to be specific but if you want to use a yoten build sunspot titans you'll love using yoten i know some warlock variants like using yoten so give it a try you know this is the final time I'm going to edge you, edge of concurrence i'm putting here in b tier specifically because it's special trait lightning seeker is capable of some absolutely haram things the one shot potential on this thing is there it's guaranteed you know it's a glaive it still does 121 to the body so you know you hit him once in the body you hit him with the melee you're probably going to get a two hit as long as you don't get hoed by resilience or recovery you know two shotting them obviously as long as you have the ammo the ammo concerns really aren't there you get ammo out of thin air once you actually activate lightning seeker um it gives you a free shot to use for that and you know getting the one kill that chains and it tracks it's just a freaking awesome weapon the only thing is it's a glaive and are you seriously considering using glaives as being worth your exotic slot not not really not really not really I'm going to do something silly. I'm going to put Izanagi's Burden right here, specifically because it is a sniper. It feels good. It has ornaments that actually make the scope very, very usable. This is the first time I've actually mentioned ornaments, but I never use base Izanagi's Burden because I feel that the sights are just a little bit too cooked. You know, Izanagi's, if you can deal with ammo, it's 
really good. It's just a solid sniper, but it's in B tier because compared to other exotic snipers, by other exotic sniper, I mean singular exotic sniper that I'm going to mention relatively soon. You don't really want to be using it, but if you need a kinetic option for a sniper and you just have an exotic slot lying around, give Izanagi's a try. It's still good. It handles well, and hey, if you can get Honed Edge to work, good for you. I'm just gonna say it, a year ago, Witherhorde was probably the best gun in Crucible. It did everything. Now, I disagree. It's comparable to other good legendary grenade launchers. Waveframes are better. Witherhorde is going to be better in four days when it's released. Witherhorde, it has seen better days. It's still good in PvE, just, you know, in Crucible... It's time is over. I know you can use it when you're playing control. Iron Banner sometimes get funky. You're not bringing this thing into Trials of Osiris unless you're really, really weird. It's hard to get those direct impacts. It doesn't have the kind of swagger and aim assist that it used to have. It's not as magnetic as it was before. Good for aerial denial. It is a one trick pony and the trick that it has people are so used to it that you're not getting a lot of use out of it so with a horde it's here b tier the f end of b tier actually because it is comparable to good legendaries and that's about it just some final closing thoughts, wrapping up B tier. Really, I just want to reiterate the point that all of these weapons I do think are usable. I think that all of these weapons are good in their own right, and it doesn't take a lot of effort to make them good. However, when you look at these weapons compared to some of the legendary weapons that are currently in the game, you have to think to yourself, Jesus Christ, John Bungie, why did you make this legendary weapon here as good as these exotics prosecutor for example just outclasses hard light centrifuge and quicksilver storm so you have to actually consider you know it's like would i rather just use the legendary weapon or do i want to have a little bit of fun and make a build around this specific exotic you know certain pulse rifles even the bad juju revision zero graviton lance there are other better pulse rifles even though pulse rifles aren't the best place in the meta you know sidearms heliocentric oh man traveler's chosen rat king craustasia if you want to use a sidearm good sidearm is heliocentric you just have to choose whether or not you want to use your exotic on that or if you think the legendary can compete with it and more often than not the option is the legendary is going to out compete or even be even with some of these exotics Moving on to the A tier. Now, A tier is what I like to refer to as worth the exotic slot. These are the exotics that I am never ever going to question somebody on my team or against me having you know they'll use it i might say oh cool they're using x i get it i understand what they're doing i know why they're doing it and there really is never a problem with these these are the exotics that you start that you set out to say hey i'm going to use this exotic because it's good and i'm going to build around it these are never the afterthought these are always the forethought because you say okay this is good this is my build around it so let's get right into it starting off with our hand cannon block is ace of spades ace of spades has been good since the nanosecond it dropped into the game there has never been a time there has never been a meta where this hasn't been good there's been things that have been better than it and that's for sure memento mori it's seen some better days you know there have been some builds specifically when i amassed titan that took really really good advantage of this thing when memento mori used to be able to be stored but this thing is just a great 140 it's just are you going to use this or are you going to use any of the other options on this list i recommend ace of spades to everybody if you're a new player and you need a hand cannon to use ace of spades it's just one of the most consistently smooth hand cannons you're ever going to use it is just the fundamental type b hand cannon and it is worth the exotic slot up next is Thorn. If you asked me nine months ago, I would say no, Thorn does not make this list. However, new Catalyst, new Thorn, basically a brand new gun. Thorn is hot right now. It's on everybody's minds. Everybody's using it or was using it a lot more before the March patch, but it is still something that is seeing a whole heck of a lot of use now that's received a phenomenal Catalyst tailor-made to the strengths of everything that this gun does well and improved all the areas where it didn't do well. There should be no objections that Thorn is worth the exotic slot. However, it's not quite at the top, top tier, the upper echelon. 
Moving on to Hawkmoon, I used to be jealous that as an Xbox player, I wasn't able to get Hawkmoon during Destiny 1, and then when we finally received it in Destiny 2, or rather when we finally received it in Year 2 of Destiny 1, I thought it was okay, and then when we got it back during Destiny 2, this thing is a monster. This gun is really more down to the player itself rather than the gun, but this is one of those fundamentally smooth, like, practice hand cannons that if you're good with Hawkmoon, you're probably good with a spades, you're probably good with Thorn, you're probably good with Crimson or Sturm or really any other hand cannon in the game, you're good with Igneous Hammer, you're good with everything else. I can go on and on and on. Hawkmoon is just one of those guns that has always been good since it's been in the game and it's worth the exotic slot. Alright, before I say the name of this next exotic, I want you to pretend you're me for a second. You're making this video on April 5th. Now, if you are a controller player, you have been using this gun since the very beginning of time in memoriam, and it has never been bad for you. It hasn't been effective sometimes, you know, it's been a little bit underwhelming other times, it's been just fundamentally broken at some stages of the game, but the last word is always something that needs to be considered. The Grenader Jake special, if you will. This is the controller player's best friend, this is the Cami Cakes gun personified, you know, this gun is for people who are cultured and in four days this thing is going to be back it's officially gonna three tap again if you can hit him in the head and the hip this gun is going to be fixed and it is worth the exotic slot if you want to build around it i know clown me if you will i know this is definitely gonna be a controversial one but in four days from now none of you will be arguing with me Speaking of guns, you're not going to be arguing with me about in four days, we have Sunshot. Sunshot used to be good, but they broke it when they adjusted everybody's health value, so now it no longer consistently three taps people to the head like it's supposed to, but that's getting fixed. It'll be the only hand cannon above a 140 RPM that can consistently three tap, so this thing, in theory, is going to outgun things like Igneous Hammer and Rose, your two most popular legendary hand cannons. Sunshot is a gun that is fantastic. It is remarkably good. However, it takes the right player to be able to harness the essence of this thing. Sunshot is not an easy gun to use. This is not one of those where you pick it up and you expect it to do well, whereas some of the B-tier weapons, you can pick them up and use it well. Sunshot is a gun that you need a lot of practice with to make it work, but once you make it work, holy hell does it work. And for our final exotic hand cannon, we have Ariana's Vow. Ariana's Vow is something that has been out of sight, out of mind for a while. It's always one of those lingering in the background. It does something that not a lot of special weapons can do currently, and that is prime really, really well on a super, super efficient ammo schedule. Hitting somebody with the exotic perk activated for Ariana's Vow allows you to one-tap them with nearly every single other weapon in the game. Hot swapping with Ariana's Vow is back on the freaking menu. I want every single one of you to pick up an Ariana's Vow and to pick up something like a steady hand or a rose for your primary and take it out for a spin on the town you know, Ariana's Vow has been neglected for a while. This thing is definitely worth the exotic slot in Crucible. However, like Sunshot, it takes the right kind of operator not to mess it up. Don't come back here and say, yo, Ariana's Vow sucks. It probably because you haven't practiced with it enough. But once you do, you're going to do work. And moving on to a gun that needs no explanation why it's ranked all the way up here is Fighting Line. Fighting Line used to be garbage, then it had some changes to its ammo economy. It's currently the only grenade launcher that you can just spam infinitely. It takes a little bit of finesse, but if you used to enjoy the grenade launcher priming and that finishing play style, look no further than Fighting Lion. The Gammy Cake Special, this thing will take you as far as the Ariana's Vow with. It's just getting practice with it, really. It's a phenomenal exotic, and it is definitely worth the use of your exotic slot and building around, you know, doing hot swaps between fighting lion and a hand cannon or an auto rifle or a scout rifle, really anything you want to use, this thing facilitates and it facilitates it really well. Dead Man's Tail fell off harder than pretty much nearly any other exotic that we've seen in the past, maybe besides Hard Light. Hard Light fell off a little bit harder than Dead Man's Tail. However, Dead Man's Tail, it's back and it's better than ever. Checkmate, scout rifles are really, really freaking good right now. Take out a Dead Man's Tail out of your vault, even though there were changes to the way cranial spikes work it's still a solid option and if you get that attack speed rolling oh man you do serious work with this thing 
Up next, for me personally, is a scout rifle that I feel is better than Dead Man's Tail, or at least I like using more than Dead Man's Tail. That is Jade Rabbit. Jade Rabbit is a very beginner friendly scout rifle that everybody should have in their bag of tricks because nothing beats getting hit with one of the worst maps in the game, like Disjunction or Multiplex, and then just pulling out the big daddy Jade Rabbit and just killing people. You know, it's so frustrating to go against and it's so satisfying to actually use. But besides that, because of the meta currently in the way that double primaries are currently the favored weapon, this thing is outranging hand cannons, outranging pulches, outranging scout uh, auto rifles. As long as you're playing in the appropriate positions, use Jade Rabbit. However, if you're in that 20 meter range, you're gonna get destroyed. This is more down to map awareness and positioning than it is to the actual gun being the carry job, but this gun is a hard counter to pretty much every other primary setup that you can think of, if you have the right map. I think I'm the only person that rates Suros Regime this highly as being worth the exotic slot. Suros Regime has very quickly become one of my most used weapons in the past season. I have played more Crucible this season than I probably have than any other season ever. And Suros Regime is one of those reasons why it is just such a solid, consistent auto rifle between both spinning up and the slow fire modes for this thing. I much prefer the spinning up, you know, getting that quick fire pre-firing, bursting around corners. There's a certain method to using the Suros regime. It has two very distinct and both very good play styles that you should definitely have in your bag of tricks. This thing does counter quite a lot of strategies. It's anti-rush as long as you can get it spun up right away. Suros regime is definitely worth the exotic slot in my mind. I don't expect everybody to agree with me. I expect some people will say that things like the Summoner and Prosecutor are better. However, I just disagree on its face. Suros regime, once you get it to work, does beat out those auto rifles it's just getting it to work it's more down to player skill but once you're practiced with this thing holy it is such a satisfying experience to actually get it done Vex Mythoclass is up next, and this is one of those that I don't really know how I feel about it, other than it just basically gives you free special ammo. The fusion rifle component, the charge up, you know, the, you know, once you get those three kills with it, you have the three shots with this thing. It's really, really freaking good, man. Like, just use Vex Mythoclass if you want something different, if you want to throw back to the days of Season of the Lost Particle Deconstruction. It's never been bad it's just much better when there are seasonal mods that make it better and thankfully this season we have rays of precision and things that benefit solar weapons so definitely try to give vex myth a class another chance it's a weapon that's worth the exotic slot and it's very good to build around very fun to build around super super consistent if anything I don't even have time to explain why no time to explain is a good gun. All I'll say is that it's worth your time to use it. Best time pack pulse rifle in the entire game. It's going to get a little bit worse in four days. However, it's still going to be fantastic. Outbreak Perfected is the only reason why I regret making this video now because I'm not going to get the chance to review it with its new bag of tricks. However, Outbreak Perfected as it is currently is one of the most consistent pulse rifles in the entire game. Between the SIVA, the Outlaw, the fact that this thing is just smooth, it feels like it hits like a truck, all of its ornaments are good and alter the sights in good ways to make the picture more clear. If you're using this thing without an ornament, you're kind of throwing. My preferred ornament is the Trousers Osiris one because it just makes the sight picture all the more clear for you. It's just one of those that everybody should pick up and use. And once it becomes craftable in a couple of months, I think on May 7th or May 27th, whenever the zero hour mission comes back, this thing is just going to get even better. Mark my words. Once the thing gets head seeker, it's going to be incredible. But as I'm reviewing it right now, it's definitely worth the exotic slot. Just a consistent work horse rifle. Last but not least, we have Vigilance Wing. The last item I'm including in A tier. Vigilance Wing is a sex machine. Once you use it once, once you get a hang of it, this thing going to outgun most hand cannons in the game. It's going to outgun most other pulse rifles with the exception of maybe Outbreak and no time to explain. It just depends on the challenges that you're making. This thing, it gets better when your teammates die. So as long as you're not dying and they're dying, it's always going to benefit you. 
I like Vigilant Swing. It's been good since vanilla. It's one of the most unique weapons in the entire game. To the best of my knowledge, there's not anything else that is a five round burst pulse rifle. So because of that, it just occupies a certain place in the meta that is almost impossible for Bungie to nerf without actively destroying the gun. This thing two bursts in a surprisingly short amount of time, even though it only has a time to kill of 0.77. If you're hitting minimum seven Seven headshots with this thing. People are just going to be melted and blown the hell away. Pick up a vigilant swing, hold angles, play range, play with this gun the way it is designed to be played. Do not expect to be brain dead rushing in like it's an auto rifle, like it's an SMG. If you're not playing this gun like a pulse rifle is supposed to be played, you're going to hate me for saying this. However, if you use it the way John Bungie intends you to use it, this thing will treat you very, very well and is 100% worth the exotic slot. Wrapping up the A tier, this is the final list of all the guns that I feel are 100% without question worth the exotic slot in a Crucible perspective. Now, some of these you might disagree with. I think the most people are going to disagree with are actually going to be Ariana's Vow, Ace of Spades, and Sunshot, but that's just because they really have been out of the limelight for quite a while, and admittedly, the last word, I'm reviewing this like it's going to be good in four days. I do not have the benefit of using it when it's actually able to three tap currently but before it was broke it was you know doing that kind of magic and killing people very quickly so this is my list let me know what you think about the a tier and that's about it oh yeah i almost forgot s tier these things are broken these things every single one of the guns that i'm going to say in s tier are op if not borderline op and all of them need to be toned down they need a nerf in some capacity otherwise they're just going to keep on ruining the game for the vast majority of the player base I have the benefit of hindsight with Forerunner in saying that this thing survived the special ammo changes far better than any other gun. With Forerunner, you can guarantee minimum two kills per life plus an extra two shots as long as you are being efficient with this thing. Even if you need to use four bullets per kill, you're still guaranteeing two bullets for life. This thing gets ammo back like no other. It's super efficient. It's smooth. It maps people at ranges that you wouldn't even expect. Forerunner currently is actually bugged it received the precision hit modifier scaling that the other legendary sidearms received when the checkmate changes went through so relatively soon this statement might not be true however foreigner is actually getting increased damage to compensate for the fact that it received a precision modifier that shouldn't have existed so this thing is still more than likely going to three tap this is probably the only other gun that i wish i had the benefit of hindsight but the time i'm making this video this is just a little bit uncomfortable forerunner is remarkable it has one of the best ornaments in the entire game i know i don't talk a lot about ornaments but the ornament that turns this gun into a black armory weapon is i think my second favorite ornament in the entire game it just it, it, it f quite frankly simply put up next in turn, but borderline broken weapons is Cloud Strike. This thing has more aim assist than even God knows what to do with. If you see somebody using Cloud Strike, they're probably the most freak outlandish Titan you've ever seen. Usually, whenever I see someone using Cloud Strike, they're cheating. I know that is a super, super strange thing to say, but if I see you're playing on Epic Games and you're using Cloud Strike and Peacekeepers on an SMG Titan, I'm just going to assume you're cheating because your journey score is sub 1000 and Epic Games is really, really easy to get re-verified on. Anyway, besides my own personal experience with this thing, Cloud Strike basically has zero flinch. The stability boost that you get from the Catalyst alone probably made this thing the one of the best snipers we've ever seen in Destiny ever, with the exception of maybe Icebreaker from Destiny 1. In terms of exotic snipers, I don't think there's ever been an exotic sniper as good as Cloud Strike has been currently. Cloud Strike needs toning down. It needs something to change about it. Otherwise, it's going to keep on ruining games for most people. The special ammo economy changes did a little bit to help. However, there are still the fundamental factors of cloud strike being that it is remarkably stable it has no flinch it has a crazy crazy amount of aim assist specifically on controller and this thing almost feels like an auto win if somebody looks in your general direction with it 
Moving on is Duality. Now, Duality, the shotgun, is one of the most solid shotguns in the entire game. I'm talking specifically Duality plus Catalyst. If you don't have the Catalyst, this thing is worth the exotic slot. But when you have the Catalyst, this thing is borderline broken. It has more range than you know what to do with. The only reason why this thing isn't as good as it used to be is because, like most things, special ammo changes kind of killed the playstyle. However, this thing, when it works, is just so good that it's almost feels unfair to both play with and play against this is the mouse and keyboards player best friend if they want a slug shotgun admittedly if they don't want a slug shotgun that is exotic they could probably just use heritage however mouse and keyboard players you're using duality it does everything for you it is such a good shotgun i cannot even begin to stress this enough it is borderline broken and even though i don't think it needs any changes because because of the way the special cam ammo economy is right now, if they ever tweak it to allow for more special ammo or more spawns or even just keeping more in your inventory, I can easily see duality just becoming out of control again. On the yin and yang of broken shotguns, we have the chaperone, whereas duality is the mouse and keyboard player best friend, chaperone is the controller player's best friend. I don't know what it is about the controller plus chaperone but i can't begin to think of another weapon that has as much bullet magnetism as much aim assist as chaperone does i mean obviously cloud strike is a clear contender but i'd argue that chaperone is just more sticky than cloud strike is whereas cloud strike if somebody kills you with it you're like ah they're probably using a zim or something Cla chaperone on the other hand somebody kills you with it they're like that's just a little timmy who got his xbox for his first birthday and he decided to load up into his first game at crucible with chaperone and he's going to destroy you. The high-end players who use Chaperone are freaks from another dimension. I'm looking at you people who specifically are using Scatter Grenade, Void Hunter builds, or Omni Oculus, just running around full in viz, getting the True Sight, Flawless Executioner, and just being absolute demons. Thank God that the special ammo economy changes made Chaperone take a backseat. However, the only reason why this thing isn't freaking broken again is because of special ammo changes. The gun itself needs something done to it in terms of aim assist so that it isn't destroying people while it's being used on controller. But, God forbid, you know, it's a little bit less effective on mouse and keyboard, so that's the only thing that's keeping it away from me saying that is the best weapon in the entire game. Yeah, this thing is fucking broken. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think conditional finality is good. I don't like using it because it feels disgusting to use. Conditional finality is just one of those gun. It, it's when it, when it's in your hands, it's grimy. If you use conditional finality. I'm sorry, I'm not going to glaze you like I glaze LeBron. I glaze conditional finality because I needed to get nerfed. Tom Farnsworth, whoever still works at Bungie at this point, I don't know who's in charge of the game anymore. Like Deej, DMG, whoever. Please, hear my words. Nerf conditional finality. Nerf its attack speed. Nerf its range. Nerf its ammo, for Christ's sake. Make it spawn in with one bullet per burst because one bullet is more than enough. I know you have your Doom shotgun. I know you have your freaking double barrel fantasy but please dear god this thing has been ruining crucible since the day it dropped from root of nightmares i cannot even begin to stress to you whenever i see somebody on the enemy team using conditional finality i feel a visceral sort of rage that i have never felt in my life before conditional finality came into existence please dear god i am begging you this thing is broken it is the most overpowered gun in the entire game Fix it. Please, I'm begging you. I'm done yapping. You understand where I'm coming from when I say all of this. Don't pretend you don't, by the way. Even you people who abuse it know how good conditional finality is. And that's the reason why you abuse it. Use a different... Alright, so with that all said and done, that was S tier, borderline OP. And for those of you keen-eyed observers, you would notice that I'm missing a single gun. There is one gun that I did not list on this entire tier list. That is because Cerberus Plus One is the best gun in the entire game. I do not care. The Catalyst, it's garbage, by the way. I, I changed my mind on that. But Cerberus Plus One is such a good gun. It beats even Conditional Finality. It needs more buffs. It needs 20% extra damage per barrel. It needs five more barrels. Please, my glorious kings, make Cerberus Plus One one the best gun in the entire game because it's even gooder it, bring it back to destiny one make a game where it's just service plus one
one. Bring Cerberus plus one to Marathon for all I care. It is such a good gun. It is S tier. It's not borderline OP. It's actually OP, but I'm forced to include it in S tier borderline OP because I don't want to make the screen go anymore. Anyway, in all seriousness, all those guns that I included in S tier, with the exception of Cerberus, I'm not actually going to rank Cerberus because it is only special to me. It is my special. It is my Yuji Adore. It is my Sukuna. Anyway, that was my tier list. Please let me know what you liked about it, what you disliked about it. If you thought that there was anything that I got wrong or missed, because I'm sure some of you are vehemently disagreeing with me in the comments right now. I, I, I already felt many of you coping and seething and molding when I included some things in the lower tier, like Arbalist and C tier. Holy, why would I even do that? Like D tier, all the trace rifles, every single trace rifle could possibly even be in D tier. Nope, I used every single gun for the purpose of this video. So besides that, I'm looking at the time. It's been around an hour and 20 minutes. I have been yapping all day making this. This has taken me a very long time to make more time than I would like to admit. It's my longest video to date, and I'm extending it by yapping even more. So, finally, I would like to thank each and every single one of you for watching this video, for sticking with me until this point. If you made it to this point, please comment something silly like Cerberus Plus One Best Gun in the Game, Best Gun of All Time. Anyway, Thank you for watching, like, subscribe, comment, share if you can, if you like the video, if you don't like the video, please let me know why in the comments, and have a great weekend. Take care now. I just realized that I forgot to include dead messengers, so instead of leaving everybody in the comments to wonder, uh, it's C tier. Yes, I'm not going to tell you why it's C-tier, just that it used to be good, and it's not now, and if you want a waveframe, just use forbearance. Have a great day, everyone.